Hello world, welcome to the 53rd video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. This is the fifth video in our Zillow API playlist, and it's been quite a while since I've posted with this, but um, I'm glad to be back because I enjoy doing this. And so, in our last video of this playlist, we use pandas and matplotlib to find the mean price using the square fee of all the houses in my neighborhood. I own a rental property in Louisiana and we're using automated features to and the Zillow API to pull information and update Excel and then read from that Excel file. And so basically we took this list of addresses, ran it through the Zillow API, and got the square feet, the, the price and the square feet of every single house. And then we use that vid, use this data in the last video to um, plot a graph of all of the mean prices. So for the mean square feet on the um, y axis, and then you had the price on the x axis. So I was pretty excited. I showed my realtor this uh, YouTube video and he mentioned that uh, just be aware that my neighborhood made a shift so in the beginning it had mostly custom houses and then um, you know several years into it a uh, large manufacturer of homes with less custom uh, I still think they're very custom homes but you know it's kind of pre-manufactured it's a company called DSLD and he said hey some of these um, homes built later have a lower value and so I that kind of gave me motivation to check the year built and see what kind of data that that gives us and so in this video what we're going to do is use the Zillow API to get the year built update that Excel and then use pandas and matplotlib to get some data analytics from that and so um, first I want to show you how I use the Zillow API to get the year built. So please make sure you've watched the whole playlist up to now because none of this will make sense if you haven't. So we're going to go into this data testing function here where we start the API, create a dictionary. We're going to call the pretty print that uses JSON data and makes it pretty. And then we're going to use this api.getDeepSearchResults. You're going to pass it your key. Again, watch the previous videos if you're not tracking this. The home address of my rental. And then I want to pretty print this JSON dictionary. So let's check this out. I'm going to call this data testing. All right. And then so in this JSON at the very top, you're going to see extended data, bathrooms, bedrooms, so on. And then you're going to see this year built. So in the extended data, there's a year, year built function. OK, so let's uh, comment that out, create our own dictionary so we can um, iterate through it. And let's call a function called year built. And then let's print that. There you go. All right, I still have my uh, we're still printing out the amount. So that is the amount that you're seeing. But anyways, here's the year built, 2009, just like I showed you. All right, so now that we know how to get it from the JSON data that the Zillow API gives us, we can go into the function we did in a previous video where we wrote it to Excel using XLRD. We iterated through every single address in the Excel. We passed it this amount. We pan passed it this finished square feet. And now we're going to pass it the year built. So what we're going to do is the same thing you saw below. We're going to get the deep search. We're going to pass it our key, the address and city, and the postal code. We're going to create our own dictionary. We're going to create a variable called year built in the extended data in year built. And then down here, we're going to pass it into the fourth column of our worksheet. 
And then we're going to, uh, you know, plus one makes it go through each one. So, um, and what that will look like, we're not going to run that because it takes quite a while. Oh, it doesn't take a while, but it, it could take a little bit. Um, I still have this check that file, yo, so I know when to check the Excel sheet. And then it looks like this one right here. We have the price, the square feet, and the year built now. All right. So there we go. Now we have an Excel sheet that we use Python and the Zillow API to get our price, our square feet, and the year built. So we can close out of these. All right, now we're going to use pandas. And this is where uh, we get exciting into the exciting part of the data analytics. So in the pandas, uh, you create a data frame. This is the standard for pandas. Please make sure you watch my other videos. We're going to read this Excel, which I just showed you, which has the, uh, the price, the square feet, and the year built. I want the index column to be zero, which uh, you need to tell pandas so it knows. And then um, I want to print this data frame and this time we're going to use a new method called group by. So I want to group it by the year built and then find the mean of that data. So and then we're going to print it. So let's check this out. I think I've already called yep pandas. I called this function pandas neighborhood test. Right. All of this was covered in a previous video. This is the new stuff right here. So the column is called year built. So this is what you pass in here is the year built. So let's run this and see what it finds us. Okay, so what it returned was this right here. Year built, 2007 to 2019. The mean price for each year right here. And then the mean square feet. The mean square feet is not really that important um, to me, but the mean price is important. All right, so that's kind of a weird looking data. Um, and that's just the mean, so that's pretty cool. But you can also do a new another method using group by. So this time we're going to print the data frame, which we passed up here. Data frame equals pandas pd dot read Excel, your Excel that you want it to read. All right, so dot group by. Year built, same as above, but this time we're going to use dot ag, which is dot aggregate. And you can pass a bunch of arguments. I want to pass it mean, the minimum, so it's going to look at all of them in each year and pass me the minimum price in square feet and the maximum. So let's print that out. All right, so what this did was here, so you have these three are the price, mean, min, max, and the square feet, min, mean, min, max. So this is a little bit better. So it looks like there was one house probably built in 2007, since this is all the same data. So today's mean price, it, well, yesterday's when I ran that um, Excel function. So right now it's worth $241,845. Uh, it's the min and the max. But check this out, in 2008, so the mean is, uh, 247,000 but as you can tell as all data analytics people know you have to have clean data so I doubt there is a property in our neighborhood that has uh, a thirty thousand dollars so I need to check my data to find out why it's reading that same with this one in 2009 there is a house in our neighborhood that has twenty thousand one hundred and eight three square feet I don't think that's right for my neighborhood, so I would have to clean that up. But the rest of the data looks pretty clean. So in 2010, we have a 1,500 square foot house and a 2,700 square foot house. The mean is 2,100, and the mean price is 272,000. So this is great. This is great raw data right here. Um, once you clean the data, unless there really is a, a small mansion in our neighborhood, which I don't think there is, because I used to run around it all the time, small brag, and 
uh, did not have a 20,000 square foot house. All right, so that's a lot of raw data. Uh, let's plot it out using matplotlib. So again, in previous videos, we cover how to call this. But what you can do is you can use pandas to tell matplotlib how you want to plot something. So we are going to data frame dot group by again, the year built. I want to find the mean at another dot, right? We're going to pass another method called plot. So now we're in the matplotlib library. My y-axis is price. I just want the price because as you see, it'll be price and square feet. So let's just do the price. And the default is a line bar. And we don't want that. We want a bar bar. So a bar graph. So that's what this is, kind bar graph. And then in the matplotlib, you do a plot plt dot show. Again, PLT is covered in the last video, but it's the standard for how to use matplotlib. So let's run this now. All right, and it creates a chart. I'm going to uh, move my face if that's okay with you. Uh, don't think my forehead is very useful. So here we go, a little baby screen. Okay, so what we're showing here is it gave me a um, graph of what our mean price of our neighborhood is. Now again, I would clean the data to make sure this is real data, but you can see that homes that home built in 2007 and then in 2008 the mean price went up 2009 2010 11 it looks like it may have dropped 12 and then you see this large section that's low and then maybe there's only one house in 2019 which may be skewing this data or it's just a brand new custom house so but as you can see this is around the time where the DSLD homes, right, were created. So those command a little lower price. So if you really want to have a custom house, and my rental property, um, I don't know if it's a southern thing, but the Louisiana culture likes to have um, intricate crown molding, multi-layered crown molding, some wainscot, some granite, very uh, wood etched into their cabinets. So um, not as important to me. I'd rather have a bigger house, maybe some more land, but it's up to the individual homeowner. So if you're willing to pay an extra price for the custom homes, that's fine. If you're willing to pay a lower price, here we go. So I think my realtor was spot on. Um, I'd have to clean the data before I give a final conclusion. But in... Uh, you know, these pre-manufactured homes, or not pre-manufactured might be the wrong word, but they're just less customized homes, do command a lower mean price. So there you go. So that was quite a lot. We went through um, using the Zillow API to find the year built. Then we use Excel Writer, XLRD, to write those year, book, year built and iterate through that whole 500 something list of houses into Excel. Then we save that Excel. We pass it to pandas to get the mean data. And then we use matplotlib to plot it out on that graph. So quite a lot in, uh, I imagine, the data analytics career field. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye, world.